Hello, welcome to Geeky Hijinks, home of the mischief makers, and today's hidden gem is Hannibal. God forbid we become friendly. I don't find you that interesting. You will. So Hannibal Lecter, where do I even start? At the beginning, of course. So I first heard about the character of Hannibal Lecter at a very early age, and it was my mum, because my mum would tell me about films she had recently seen in that week at the cinema or on TV, but obviously in not too much detail to give me nightmares for the rest of my life. So she would tell me about films like Predator 2, Terminator 2, Alien, my mum is very cool. And one of these films was Silence of the Lambs. When I was old enough, I grabbed that VHS tape, I stuck it on, and I've been a fan of the character of Hannibal Lecter and the movie The Silence of the Lambs ever since. Now this is a TV show I would have watched either way, but my biggest pull was Mad Mikkelsen. The moment I saw he was cast as Hannibal Lecter, I was salivating because he's a fantastic actor. But I'm getting way ahead of myself, so I'm going to dive straight into why you need to watch Hannibal the TV show, why he is a hidden gem, and of course, with no spoilers. But first, let me just give you a brief summary about what the show is about. So essentially, Hannibal starts with the FBI investigating a series of murders where a number of young women have been killed in very horrific ways. And to stop more of these murders occurring, Jack Crawford of the FBI, played excellently by Lawrence Fishburne, seeks out criminal profiler Will Graham to track down the killer. But due to Will's psychological nature, Jack brings in psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal Lecter, good guy, to monitor Will to ensure that all these horrific cases that Will's investigating doesn't affect his mental health, whilst also covering up his own devious agendas. Now I could dive straight in and talk to you all about Hannibal, what a great character he is, but this show is full of amazing characters. So I'm going to talk about Hannibal in a minute, but I'm going to talk about Will first, Jack Crawford, and the slew of amazing casts and side characters that this TV show has to offer you. So let's start with Will Graham. Now those going in for Hannibal are going to come out of the show loving the character of Will just as much. Will Graham played excellently by Hugh Dancy. It's as mentioned, a criminal profiler working with the FBI, but not for the FBI, due to him failing to pass screening tests regarding his mental stability. Will is an excellent character, he's full of pure empathy and this is visually shown in his care for stray dogs. However, because Will's on the spectrum, he's not really able to fully engage with other people except for when he's around Hannibal, who initially Will isn't a big fan of, but as the show goes on, he begins to trust Hannibal and Hannibal completely takes advantage of this. Now Jack Crawford played as mentioned by Lawrence Fishburne in what I think is one of his best roles alongside Morpheus in The Matrix, I'd even say he's better than Morpheus of the Matrix because he spent more time with him. Now Jack Crawford is a really interesting character. He's strong, he's smart, he's a very capable man. He does whatever it takes to capture the bad guys, whether they come in dead or alive. And it's this need to capture these serial killers that leads into Will. And this is where it gets interesting because you cannot work out Jack's true intentions regarding Will. Because on one hand he cares about Will and he doesn't want to see him go too far over the edge. But on the other hand, Will is so good at catching these killers, he just can't help but push Will that extra further into the abyss, regardless of Will's mentality. So to cover his back, he makes sure this doesn't happen by sending him to psychiatrist Hannibal Lecter. Now Hannibal Lecter, I can finally talk about him, what a character, and excellently, like, amazingly played by Mads Mikkelsen. And every time I watch this TV show, I've watched it three times now, I can watch it, I could watch it over and over again. It's like a good book or a really good film. But every time I watch him and his performance, I see new things, I see the things I didn't notice before and all the little intricacies that Mad Mikkelsen brought to the role in Hannibal. Everything he says is engaging, it's like poetry. And in his silent moments and subtle facial expressions and his body language, it says so much when he doesn't do anything at all. It's the way he manipulates Will, it's the fact he has the whole FBI chasing their own tails and even the way he kills and prepares his victims is done in a both elegantly and weirdly beautiful way. <laughs> and there is one scene in this, in season 3, not going to say if you've seen this show, you will know what I'm talking about, but when it happens, with the sound design that goes along with him, I almost flew out the window of shock. He's a character that you shouldn't like, you shouldn't support, he's doing bad things, but at the same time he's so engaging and charismatic and likeable, you kind of don't want to see him get caught. Now there's other characters in this show, and this TV show has amazing characters played by amazing actors. So I'm not going to go through them all, because I'll be here all day, but I'm going to touch on a few that I enjoyed, and one I enjoyed the most. So you've got Gillian Anderson playing Hannibal's own psychiatrist, Bedelia, 
every time she comes on and engages with Hannibal, it's the most fascinating thing I've seen. We've got a Dr. Alana Bloom, a colleague to both Wu and Hannibal, who develops potential relationships with both, creating some kind of messed up love triangle. There's Mason Verger, who's a rival to both Will and Hannibal, who creates a lot of tension and drives me nuts in the way he speaks. He's such a despicable human being, but he's such a great character because he gets those emotions out of you. And there are countless, countless, countless more, so if I've missed any, I'm sorry. But my favorite, favorite character in the show, other than the big three and the ones I mentioned, is Eddie Izzard as Abel Gideon. That guy when he comes on screen when i see his name mentioned in like sp like special guest eddie izzard i'm a happy guy because his interactions with everyone especially hannibal makes for some of the most fascinating tv i've ever seen so each season is fantastic and they're kind of broken up into season one part one season one part two but bridging them both is this interweaven interwoven even storyline regarding hannibal the FBI, Jack Crawford, and Will. So you have all these crazy, like there's so many storylines happening, but yet it's told so well, you catch every single one of them. And each and every one of these episodes and seasons leaves you wanting more and on the edge of your scene. And the reason why this show is great because it's paced perfectly. Brian Filler, who was a showrunner, he didn't know if this was gonna be the last season. Is this gonna be the last season? Are we gonna get another season? So he always ended each season with a boat. So series one, you could be happy with if it ended like that. You've got a nice complete story, but it continues to season two. Season two ends. You know, I'm, I'm happy with this, kinda. Happy with it, but I could do another one. Series three, and it ends. And there was never a full series, but they end series three, like that is the last ever episode of a trilogy of great series. Now, let's talk about the cinematography, the music, and the editing, all of which are absolutely insane. It's like taking your most delicious meal of all time and seeing the feeling of eating it on your screen. Now the editing absolutely melts my face off. Everything from Hannibal preparing the meals or the victims he's just killed, from the murders themselves to Will's interpretation of these murders, as well as the sex scenes. Some of the music in this show is so good that sometimes I could feel my eyes warming up because it's so powerful and it goes so well with the scene. It's, it's amazing. Now the dialogue on this is the best dialogue I've heard in any TV show or film Ever. And that's kind of a bold statement because I love Quentin Tarantino, Reservoir Dogs, Pop Fiction, amazing dialogue. But this is right in my alley. It's like fine dining. It's so rich and there's so many layers. It's like when you're in Hannibal's office, you've got Hannibal, his patient, and you're just sitting there with them. That's how engaging the show is. Now, I could go on and on and on about Hannibal all day long, but I'll be here for the rest of my life. In fact, the only problem I do have with Hannibal is that it had to end. So if this hasn't made you want to watch it, I, I, I have failed. I have failed you Hannibal, I'm so sorry, because you need to see it. And now if you have seen the TV show, let me know in the comments, have you seen it? What was your favorite part? Did you understand the part in season three that was really shocking to me, that made me fly out the window? Was there bits that you appreciated in the show that I may have not seen and I can appreciate now? Definitely let me know in the comments. If you haven't seen him, let me know in the comments. Have I persuaded you to go and see him? Don't get me wrong, you may give the show a go and it may not be for you, or you may watch it and think, you know what, Joe, it's good, but not as good as I thought you did. And that's absolutely fine, but Hannibal is at least a show that deserves you giving a chance, and if you have watched it before, definitely watch it again because you can never get bored of this thing. But until next time, stay out of trouble.